Welcome to another study session of Study Chess with me. And we're going to be visiting tactics here, but I'm going to change it a little bit. Over the last few months, I've been using the Chessbase Web Tactics app exclusively. I've alternated recently by rotating a bit with their Sprint Tactics exercise, which is really fun and very cool. And I think it's very useful. But of course, when you're trying to pack in instant tactics of a few moves, it's not going to necessarily help prepare you for deeper thoughts. I recently read a really fascinating account of a method called the Woodpecker Method, and it's described by the Grandmaster now, Axel Smith, in his book called Pump Up Your Rating, a really great book, by the way, in spite of its clickbait title. And it's based on a tactical training method by the Finnish Grandmaster Tikkanen, whose name apparently translates to as Woodpecker, hence the name. The name was given by Axel Smith, by the way. Now, the idea works like this. You have a thousand positions, not too difficult. You don't want to spend hours on a single position. And you're going to try to solve all of these thousand positions, the full run, and keeping track, of course, of how many you get right, how long you took to run the whole, the whole glut of them, and so forth. You're not doing 1,000 exercises in one day, at least not at the beginning. After you've done all 1,000 exercises, concentrated, fully focused, visualizing all of the moves, etc., you do it again. And after you, now obviously you're going to be remembering a lot of them, and that makes sense, but there's a thousand. You might not remember every move and so forth. When you do it again, don't content yourself to just get the right moves. Do the entire process. Visualize the entire line, the correct line, possible refutations if necessary and basically solve them completely, regardless of whether it rings a bell or you remember the key move. After you've done this second run, you do it a third time. Now, this isn't immediately intuitive as far as training is concerned, because you would think, well, I've already seen these positions. How can that be beneficial? Well, according to Axel Smith and to Kanan as well, it was something that really got him out of a rut. He had been training tactics very normally, you know, lots of positions every day, hours, and he wasn't getting anywhere. I mean, he had gotten to, let's say, International Master, which, of course, is significant, but wasn't really closing in on his goal anymore of becoming a Grandmaster. When he revised his training method to do this way, everything changed. Apparently, he jumped like 100 to 150 ELO points in, a, in the course of a few months, got his three norms, and became a Grandmaster. This wasn't an isolated case, otherwise it just might be something that worked for him. Apparently they tried this on another player who was similarly stuck. Not master to grandmaster, but let's say candidate master to international master, which was his goal. And in the space of a few months after trying this exact method, he also succeeded in jumping 150 points and getting his title. So obviously, this is an intriguing and certainly attractive approach, and at the very worst, it can't be bad for you. So I plan to try this using um, a technique or a function in Chessbase called replay training, and I'm going to show this to you now how it works really quickly. So here is the opening position of my suite of exercises. Um, I will be providing a link in the description so that you can download the PGN to my thousand exercises. I don't claim any special unique capabilities of these. I just gathered these from well-known databases of tactical exercises just to make my 1000. And that's okay. It's not supposed to be something magic or special. It's not about the 1000 positions, really. You don't want them to be too easy and you want them to be too hard either. In any case, as you can see, we have this little thing above, and here's how it works in Chessbase. This function is why I really want to do it here. It allows me to review the moves and compare them with engine solutions. It doesn't give me the engine solution right off the bat. And I don't see, as you can see, the solution, which is actually there in the notation. What happens is this. If I play a move that's bad, it's going to tell me by how much it is off the best move. Not just how off it is, let's say, compared to the move played or given, but how off it is compared to the best engine move, because the engine might even have a better solution. 
So let's choose a random move here and see what happens. Okay, so you played g6. This is not so good because of queen e8, so it gives us the refutation as well. And the best engine move is 10.4 pawns better. Okay, so already we're getting feedback, which is really useful. Sometimes, I don't know about you, I'm looking at a solution and I think, well, what's wrong with my move? And now we know. And this solution isn't necessarily in the notation at all. So we get these feedback corrections on the fly. So the correct move here is, well, it should be queen c4. Queen c4, king, yeah, queen c4, king b8, uh, rook takes c7, queen takes d7, queen takes g8. And that should be good enough. Okay. Now, I also have, and yes, obviously this continuation here is rook takes d7 um, and queen takes g8. However, let's suppose that I'm really not sure. You know, I... Do you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just lost here. I, I need a hint. Well, there's a hidden button. You can't see it. It's a little cut off on the video. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to say. But on the side here, there is a little button at the top that looks like a red lifesaver. And when I click on it, and you will see the result at least, it'll give me a hint. It'll be a very generic hint as a rule. Although sometimes it's pretty specific. So I'll click on it sacrifice something the next move is a killer promotion so now we have a hint by the engine which is not provided in the notation at all that gives us a clue as to how to proceed from here it could be just from the starting position you've tried once you've tried twice you don't know so we'll play the correct move rook takes d7 Finished, 1-0, and now we can go to the next one. Now, to not waste time actually having to go through the list of games and choose the next position, I'll tell you flat out, there's a shortcut in chess base. It's the key F11, and if you click F11, it will simply go to the next game or position in the list. So I'll click F11 here. And we already have the next exercise. Okay. So now you've gotten the idea as to how I plan to proceed in my tactics training for the next several videos at the very least, and of course in my own personal time. I invite you to join me while I do this, and if I spend a lot of time analyzing, I will probably accelerate the video and give you a label telling you how much time I spent on that position. Since I'm recording the video live, I will know from the, how much video was recorded, how much time I actually spent, and I will be forthcoming about this. And if I make a mistake, well, you'll see it too. Okay, let's get to it. Oh, it shouldn't make any difference, honestly. My idea was actually the same thing, but in a different move order. And I didn't see anything wrong with the remove order, so I was going to play queen h7 check, king f8, 
and then 95. And you really can't do anything about it. The engine thinks that my move is actually better than the game move. Although, frankly, I, I doubt there's any real difference. Okay, next one. Now, you may notice that it says Profondeur 14 or in the little green banner here. Um, that's French. It means depth. I don't know why it's in French, because I haven't configured Chessbase to be in French. But it means depth, and it's just an indication of how much the engine is calculating in the background to be able to give you feedback on moves and suggestions. Looks pretty simple. If queen takes e8, bishop g7, rook takes g7, queen takes e8. I got this one too. It's mate, actually. I think the solution is queen d4. I mean, I think the key here is the back rank weakness of rook f8. And, uh, if knight takes f7, then queen g7 mate. Continue with the idea. Oh, huh. okay. So as you saw, the um, I made my move. Rook takes f seven seemed completely normal. If king takes, then queen takes e5. And if knight takes, then queen takes c4. Big deal. Or even move the bishop away if I want. Okay. F11. I think it's rook takes c2, queen takes c2, knight f3, king f2, queen g3, king f4, 
King e2, knight d4. Looks pretty good. So my solution is rook h5, king takes, queen takes f5, king h6, queen takes e4, rook takes e4, d7, and I don't see how you can stop the pawn. Initially I was playing d7, and of course there's mate on e1, so I was missing a move. I think that works. Good one. Okay. I think H takes you six was the easy one. <clears throat> it's the follow up that's tricky. I'm honestly not sure I got it right. I actually saw that, but couldn't find anything better. I'm missing the key move here. My initial move was queen d1. I can't seem to make it work after pawn takes c3. Hmm. Maybe I'm missing something. Something obvious. Oh, right. Wow. I am missing something obvious. Okay. Yeah, I was... Should have analyzed this a little more logically, and then I would have seen it. Obviously, rook h1 is the move I dream of playing, and I have to get rid of the queen. I just didn't think it through, think it through. Okay. Yeah, this is pretty easy. I saw queen g3 almost immediately, but I'm trying to see if there's anything better. Maybe, maybe that's it. Well, we'll find out soon enough, won't we? Wow. So queen g3 was actually better than the game move, which was more creative. Interesting. I'm 
All right, well, let's figure out what he did from here. Well, I'm going to guess bishop b5, since queen f8 has the cute little trick queen d8, which I'm guessing is the solution. Bishop takes d8, rook e8, mate, and if c6, then bishop takes c6, queen takes c6, and of course the whole house falls down, so... Interesting. This is pretty, actually. This is so... Now, one of the principles of this woodpecker method is that even if you're familiar with the solution, to work through the entire line. So yeah, I can see, obviously, that we're looking at a double sack here on uh, F3, but I need to work through the entire line to make sure that I've got it all right. Wow, look at that. So rook takes f3 is a blunder. It's the right move, but it's a blunder. Well, there you go. I guess the question is why? Well, the move I saw here is bishop c8.
Well, let's take a look at the proper solution, see what's wrong with it. I mean, it's fine to have gotten it right, but uh, obviously it's wrong. And the computers have something to say about a 100-year-old combination that's been passed on from book to book. Fantastic, fascinating. All right, let's take a look. So let's go here. Can you see the analysis? Yes, you can. Good. So knight takes d4 is absolutely winning. So I'm going to give this a question mark. I mean, it deserves it, right? Let's put in the right move here, since it's still a valid position. The correct solution should be queen d1. Makes sense. Rook e8. Astonishing. What are the alternatives? Knight takes e2 is just fine. Which is honestly the move I would be inclined to play more than rookie 8. It's simpler. It does the job. You don't have a bunch of strange swish and sugs. Amazing. <laughs> so the uh, PGN will be updated with the proper solution. <laughs> Interesting. Let's go for the mate. Well, I think it was Fisher who said that, uh, it was probably not the first, that whenever he found the right move or a good move, he would 
not play it, and he would insist on trying to find a better move. Words to live by. Correspondence game, 1966. Yeah. Nowadays, easy tactics in correspondence games are non-existent. Because vengeance, really. Well. The idea seems pretty obvious, I guess. The question is, what's the proper continuation after queen takes g6? Assuming that's the right move. <laughs> Been getting a few times here. Okay, so my line, I'm just going to give it here, um, is queen takes g6. That's it's an obvious move. And I have calculated a mate. But I'm guessing that the reason why he's not the computer's not giving mate is because you can decline taking on g6 and play king h8 or g8. And I'm guessing that's why he's saying this. Otherwise, the line would be queen takes g6, king takes g6, 95 check, king f6, knight h5 check, king takes e5, bishop f4, Mate, unless I'm completely mistaken, but I don't think I am. No, oh, looks good. Oh. You played the Marmagen move, Queen takes g6. Whoa. <gasps> ah. That I'm guessing Bishop G five. So my move is made an 11. <laughs> okay. And the game move is rook f2, more precise. Who am I target? Made in five? Really? Let's see, one. I don't see made in five. I see it faster, but. Been dinged once. Okay, cool.
And this is going to be my last exercise of my study session today. And um, I don't know about you, but I've quite enjoyed it. It's been really interesting. And I absolutely don't mind having made mistakes or whatever. That's just part of it. It's not a big deal. But uh, definitely learned a few things here. <laughs> interesting. So White is clearly winning, and I have never heard of these guys before. Katalimov and Mukin played in Act Jubinsk, 1976. See any moves here. Right. Now that was a finger feller. It really was. So this is going to be my last exercise of this study session. And I must say I've quite enjoyed the process here. It hasn't been perfect, as you saw, but that's part of it. And uh, it's very, been very interesting to have the computer being able to pipe in and tell me how bad my mistake was and stuff, and I'll definitely be doing more of this. I mean, yeah, you can play queen takes queen e7, I suppose, but what's the point? I mean, knight takes d7, queen takes e2, knight f6 mate. You can throw in your knight and try to slow it down, but it doesn't change a lot. All right, I guess I'll have to figure out what his fancy schmancy solution is. Interesting. Well, in any case, thank you for joining me in uh, this tactic session. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, do be feel free to look in the description for the PGN file. This PGN file will be incorporating my corrections little by little. I don't consider this a correction since the engine is fine doing this. But there were some oddities, as you saw, particularly, for example, the room in position. And join me the next time. So happy chess and good mates.